I want to thank the organizing committee of LACNOG. I'd like to start by saying that I'm Brazilian. You may notice in my accent, I'm going to try to speak Spanish, and if something funny happens, let me know. So this, let me start. In GlobeNet, I'm responsible for peering. And we see here that as leaders of the IP area, Every day we see that there are many providers that started connecting in uh, IXPs in the United States, in Europe, but are here in the South American region. And what happens is we see that there are some that need more experience, some more support. And could you, the next slide, please. Uh, do you have a laser? Oh, it's here. Ah. Right, thank you. So, just to begin, I work in GlobeNet. It's a submarine cable company. It's a company with uh, 26,500 kilometers of submarine optic read uh, with ASN uh, 523220. It's in the 20th position in the ranking of Qaeda, and it's member of 13 internet exchanges. The network is in the United States, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, and Argentina, and Bermuda. So this experience is there with, uh, these are the main IXPs in the region. There you have our connections, but all, we also offer the clients. And historically, we started working with clients to help them pre preparing documentation, preparing technical forums, to assist them, to help them understand the differences of the characteristics of configuration of BGP when the, it's, you're present in a local IXP that is closer to you and the difference of uh, the configuration that you'll need when you're also a member of an IXP that is remote. Many are configured in the same way. The routers are configured in the same way and have operational impacts, which is not the, what they were seeking when they started with these connections. So our experience with the clients we have, with the forums and with this work, we'd like to share with the community we share this with the community, so we have documentation on this. This is a project that was created because when I started out with working with the clients, I looked for documentation and I did not find any. In fact, there is nothing on remote peering. There is no list, at least, on best practices and things that the people could look up in order to figure out a solution for the network or to understand what was happening. So the idea here is to create a documentation that can serve as a guidance for the technical teams of the autonomous systems that are present in traffic exchange points. Very often these are remotely located so that they can really find the benefits for their connections. It's not just setting up a connection. The commercial part will say, put set this up because it will work. But you have to have the people ready in the technical area to really take advantage of the benefits. And one of the important things that we are considering which this should be which should be an RFC. This is a dynamic document. Many would like to include their suggestions, but let me clarify that this is a collective document. So even if a person wrote, writes, and says, well, that is great, but if someone can write it in a better way, we should take into account that that participation was not that good. The important is to have a document that is as simple as possible so that the people can understand what it states. So this involves one of the challenges of being in an internet exchange. This could be changed for an RFC or even as a BCP. Very often, the companies, when they go to a remote traffic exchange point, they 
have very high expectations, but the technical staff has to be ready. Otherwise, it's as if you just jumps off an airplane, but you never before had any instructions as to how to open a parachute. Now, the good thing is that you really have to learn about the best practices. You have to take lessons, and you have to exchange information. And at LACNIC, through the support of the IEX Forum, there are many people who have experienced much in the same way as we have experienced at Globenet. And there are people from the community who can join us in the preparation of this document. Now, what normally happens, what are the problems we encounter? In reality, what we most see is that content is very often local content. The company has a connection, a local traffic exchange point. But what would occur if the first day you set up a connection with a remote point and this is not properly configured and not following best practices, very often that content might be delivered where it should not be delivered. So this leads then to issues of latency and paths that might have an operational impact. So according to best practices, the local content should remain local. And that is one of the main objectives of a traffic exchange point, to save, to keep local what should be local. But there is content that is not in the region, in the same region as that of the company. So in that case, you can have a remote connection to a traffic exchange point. And if best practices are followed, you can look up the content in the best way, and this makes the network more efficient. This is like a cake. Local content, which is the largest share of the traffic, is the largest share of the cake. And I always say that the remote content should be handled as a cherry on the cake. It's not to say, well, I'm going to search Google in Europe because or I'm going to go into next Netflix in Europe because I will have the list of movies in Europe. It's not about that. Companies such as Google and Netflix are working to make the content in your region closer to you and to what you need. So if you seek remote connection, then this is like the cherry on the cake. And then we have the questions. What do I have to look for in a remote peering? What would be the way of configuring this? And what are the advantages and disadvantages? of doing so. So you have the commercial issues, you have technical issues, and from the technical standpoint, we want to have the best network possible. But also, there is a commercial aspect to this. What would be the advantage be of being at a remote traffic exchange point? Well, today, there is a competition for content. In reality, well, this is in Portuguese, and he apologizes for this. In blue, you see você. Você means you. Your client is in yellow, your client. So this is a regional operator that has clients, that has other ISPs and provides transit to these clients. Normally, this is an ideal scenario. They. They receive content which is based in Europe and United States, which is in a data center in that region. So international content can reach a major operator and then the client. The client, the yellow star is the value perception that you have for your client. Now, what would occur, that would be the ideal situation, but what would be if the late, larger companies wish to send to the clients directly. So the traffic is a, one of the features of AS Path. It is downloaded directly from that provider, so your traffic decreases. That is why the star is no longer yellow. It is smaller. 
the value perception for that content is no longer with you. There's more traffic that is going through a major operator. So a direct connection to a traffic exchange point allows you to be there remotely. You can access content that you couldn't do access in the past. And downloading. So the yellow star becomes even larger. The perception of the services increases further as a result of decreasing the AS path. So that's a commercial part of this. And this is what serves the objectives of the company. But it's not like when you watch a PowerPoint. We all know what the real life is like. This might look very beautiful. This is what we would like to have. But everyday reality involves something different. So the idea is to exchange this information to learn more as to how to do this and how to produce this documentation. So that is why it is important to involve the technical community. At the end of last year, in a presentation in the IX Forum, in the IX Forum in Brazil, I spoke about this document that we want to prepare, that we want to prepare. But here at LACNOC, we involve the entire Latin American and Caribbean community. We want to have an RFC that involves all of us. So with the knowledge we have, we would like to set up this task force in order to draft this initial document, which will gradually become more mature. We'd like to add different standpoints. We'd like to have discussions. And finally, have a version that will become an RFC for example, like in IETF. And every day in these events, you know, you have those manuals and documents on LACNUC, IXPR. Outside in the booths, you have documents. Very often, we don't pay attention to what you have in the booths. So I started to do this once I found this book on IETF. I think this is something I saw at a meeting in IXBR. I'd like to thank the people who prepared this book because at least it is a reference that is most useful. I'd like to thank Julian, Lisandro, Christian, and Moreiras. I thank them for preparing this book. You might think that nobody reads these books, but there are people who read these, this book. Finally, I'd like to thank Adriana Valdevila, who is the first person who spoke about peering. This was the very first time I heard about this. He taught me a lot about this, in addition to people from Globenet who pr helped me in the task of being peering coordinator at the company. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Leonardo. We have time for a couple of questions very briefly. We have Ariel here and Wesley. So you have the floor. Wesley Correa from Telecom Training. First of all, let me congratulate you on your presentation and for your Spanish, which was most clear. I'd like to make a personal comment. I really liked your presentation and the concept. But I think this could be more related to a BCP, to a BCOP, and not to an IETF document, because even Lucy Mara, for some time, worked on a document on best practices for CPEs. And because this is from the standpoint of the operator and not from the vendor, of routers and so on. I think this more has more to do with a BCP and not an IETF document. So operators can use this document as a basis, that best practice, in order to establish peering and connections. So this is a problem there is. People perceive that there are problems. They don't pay attention to the policies and if, they announce, if this is announced or not. 
and there could be content that could be closer, but they're taking it from further away with greater latency and the experience is not so good for the user. So the problem exists and there should be a document which is community-based so that they can do their peering properly. I fully agree with the fact of pursuing this and I really urge the community to work on that document. So, Ariel Weher, you have the floor. I'm Ariel Weher. At this moment, I'm wearing the Lacknog hat. And the BCOP group, thank you very much for your presentation. And let me invite you to add this group document to the BCOP group, the Best Operational Practices group. You count on the support of many people from the community. And I would strongly recommend what Wesley said. I don't want to repeat every word he said, but I think it would be far better to have a BCOP on this. There is a more dynamic way of working with that. So you're invited if you wish to participate, and you can count on all the tools that LACNOC can give you in order to advance on this. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So with this, we finish the presentation. A big round of applause for Leonardo.